If you've ever looked at a field of shining solar panels or stood beside a roaring hydroelectric dam, you've probably wondered which of these two renewable giants is truly better. They both promise clean energy, they both reduce our reliance on fossil fuels, and they both get praised whenever we talk about building a greener future. But the truth? They each come with strengths that the other simply can't match, and a few drawbacks we often overlook. So today, we're putting solar power and hydropower head to head to understand how they work, what makes them powerful, and which one might come out on top. All happening right here on History of Simple Things. Let's start with solar, because it's the one most people see every day. Solar panels have popped up on rooftops, farms, parking lots, and massive solar fields stretching across deserts. And at its core, solar energy is surprisingly simple. Sunlight hits a photovoltaic cell, knocks around tiny electrons, and produces electricity. No moving parts, no roaring turbines, no water, just quiet, steady power from something that rises every morning. There's something almost poetic about that energy from a source that has existed long before humans and will continue long after us. But solar simplicity doesn't mean it's flawless. A solar panel is only as good as the sunlight it receives. Clouds, shade, pollution, and even the tilt of your roof can make a big difference. And once the sun goes down, solar goes to sleep. To keep the lights on at night, you need batteries, backup systems, or a very supportive grid. The world's biggest solar farms use advanced storage technologies, but storing sunlight isn't cheap. It's improving every year, though, and solar batteries have become far more efficient than they were a decade ago. Now, compare that to hydropower, one of the oldest forms of renewable energy humans have ever used. Long before we had wires and power plants, Ancient civilizations used water wheels to grind grain and power early machines. Modern hydropower takes that concept and amplifies it on an enormous scale. You build a dam, create a reservoir, and let water flow through turbines. Gravity does the rest. The results? A constant and incredibly reliable source of electricity. Hydropower is often described as energy on demand, because as long as you have water stored, you can control how much electricity you need at any moment. Need more power? Release more water. Need less? Slow the flow. That flexibility is something solar simply can't match. And unlike solar panels that rest at night, hydropower works 24 hours a day, rain or shine. It's one of the reasons many countries rely on it as a backbone of their energy grid. But hydropower has its own complications, and some of them are big. Building dams can drastically change ecosystems, rivers get blocked, fish migrations get interrupted, and local communities sometimes have to relocate when valleys turn into reservoirs. These projects require enormous investment and long construction timelines. And in places where droughts are becoming more frequent, water levels can drop so low that power generation slows down or even stops. Hydropower is dependable until nature decides otherwise. So we have one energy source that depends on clear skies and another that depends on stable water supply. That's where things get interesting. The weaknesses of one actually balance the strengths of the other. Solar peaks during hot, dry months when rivers might run low. Hydropower thrives during rainy seasons when clouds block out the sun. This is why many countries use both, not just one. They complement each other almost like two puzzle pieces. But let's narrow things down further. When it comes to cost, solar has become one of the cheapest energy sources in the world. The price of solar panels has dropped dramatically in the past decade. Installation is faster, the technology keeps improving, and maintenance is minimal. 
Hydropower, on the other hand, demands huge upfront spending, even before a single watt is produced. But once a dam is operating, the electricity it produces becomes incredibly affordable over time, sometimes lasting for 50 to 100 years. Another key difference is flexibility in location. You can install solar panels nearly anywhere, on homes, buildings, farms, deserts, even floating on lakes or reservoirs. Hydropower doesn't offer that freedom. It requires a river, elevation, proper land shape, and the political and environmental approvals to build something massive. For a small home or business, hydropower usually isn't even an option, but solar almost always is. However, hydropower carries one huge advantage, energy storage. Not in batteries, but in the form of pumped storage. Think of it like a giant rechargeable water battery. When there's plenty of electricity on the grid, hydropower plants pump water uphill into a reservoir. When electricity is needed, that water is released back down through turbines to generate power again. This makes hydropower a secret weapon for stabilizing energy grids, especially those filled with solar and wind, which constantly fluctuate. Speaking of fluctuations, let's talk environmental impact. Solar panels are praised for being clean, but they're not impact-free. Manufacturing them requires mining materials like silicon, silver, and rare metals. At the end of their lifespan, usually 25 to 30 years, recycling is possible, but not yet widespread enough. Solar farms also need large areas of land, which can affect local wildlife if not planned carefully. Hydropower's impact is more immediate and visible. Creating reservoirs floods land, rivers transform, aquatic life gets disrupted. But once a hydropower plant starts operating, it produces huge amounts of electricity without burning fuel or emitting carbon. Some dams have also implemented fish ladders, bypass channels, and other ecological mitigation systems to reduce harm. It's not perfect, but it's improving. Now let's look at capacity. Solar farms need a lot of space to produce large-scale power and output peaks only during the day. Hydropower plants, however, can produce massive amounts of power in one place. Some of the largest dams generate more electricity than entire nuclear power plants. They serve as anchors for national grids, supplying millions of homes at once. But then again, hydropower's limitations are becoming more noticeable in a warming world. Changing rainfall patterns and melting snowpacks affect rivers everywhere. In some regions, water levels are dropping to record lows forcing hydropower plants to cut back on electricity generation. Meanwhile, solar continues to grow stronger, cheaper, and easier to deploy, even in places without much infrastructure. Still, there's something important we often forget. Renewable energy isn't a competition. In reality, solar and hydropower aren't rivals, they're teammates. The future of clean energy depends on combining technologies that support and balance each other. If you enjoyed this video, please check out our other bingeable channels. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.